by some very congenial guests and extremely meaningful conversations. Today, we've been extremely fortunate to have two women absolute powerhouses, and we could not have asked for a better set of guests to end this season. Please welcome Deena Vadia of Jyoti Sagar Associates, partner, of course, based out of Bombay. And we have Menaka Guruswami, senior advocate from the Supreme Court. She's based out of Delhi. Deena, Menaka, hi. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Thank you for being here. It means a lot. Thanks for having us, I guess. Thanks for having us. It's a pleasure. Super. Over to Vikas. Vikas, we can start off with our first segment. Thanks, Tanisha. Hi, Dina. Hi, Menka. <clears throat> Welcome to the finale of Unsuited Series 3. Uh, we'll go straight to the questions. Um, can you both walk us through the time when you started off your careers? within the law and some of the invaluable lessons you learned from your mentors. Um, Dina, it'd be nice for you to narrate your kind of story around how you figured out that the law was for you, you know, how you went through the phase of being a journalist lawyer first and learning by osmosis um, yes. and how you saw that a senior partner living life to the fullest while bringing exceptional skill and focus to, your, to his work. Um, and then Menka will go on to you after that. You know, and you talking about how you fell in love with the law while studying it your junior days of a short Desai, and how he treated your mind equal to his own, um, and how you shadowed seniors and were taught to focus on having a good time while doing something as serious as the law. Not something we hear often. Right, so thank you, uh, Vikas, and hi, uh, uh, Tanisha and everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. So starting out, I mean, nobody in my family is a lawyer. So I had nothing to look to understand, no clue. And, you know, while doing my BCom, it was the old days, you, you know, there were none of these five-year law colleges, so you had to do a first degree. And one of the papers in our uh, intermediate year was uh, uh, commercial law. And uh, as things stood out, uh, I, I topped the university in that paper. And, you know, I was told this by my three professors, who included uh, Justice Varyava, who then later went on to become uh, the Chief Justice, but he was then still a practicing lawyer. And he, I think one of them suggested that, you know, this is something you might be good at, why don't you consider? So from then, you know, it was like, uh, went to government law, you know, sat uh, sort of on the back benches really, and, you know, just uh, had a good time, did enough to pass, but, I then signed my articles with Crawford Bailey, uh, which was then, you know, the leading uh, commercial law firm in Bombay. There were just a handful, three or four, and Crawford Bailey really had the cream of the corporate clients and the cream of the work. And I was very fortunate uh, to be articled to a very fun-loving senior who unfortunately has passed on, uh, Mr. Engineer. And he, you know, was just great fun. And it sort of gave me the thing that uh, it doesn't have to be super serious. You know, he did a very dry area of law, which was customs and excise. And I landed up doing a lot of that eventually also. But he made it fun. You know, it was like uh, he took us to movies. We went uh, to see hockey matches, you know, and... Uh, he did not bat an eyelid if he just, you know, did the royal bunk and uh, whatever, you know. So as, as long as you did your work. So I sort of, and I had a very nice bunch of young uh, uh, lawyers with me who, you know, we, we interacted and we went out and we, you know, got up to a few pranks here and there and stuff like that. But so that's really sort of, you know, got me that, yeah, maybe this is something, you know, I could do. And then, then I went kind of, uh, I took it to the, you know, the next logical level. So the setters exams and went and did uh, a master's in England uh, with funnily no subjects except for administrative law that were of any use to me whatsoever in my uh, later career. Uh, and then joined another old uh, uh, firm called Little & Co, which is a little bit more conservative 
very few women there. I think I kind of shook it up a bit, you know, nobody, everyone wore saris. So I said, like, I'm not having any of this, you know, I'm going <laughs> to... It took, it took me 10 years later to get into the trousers, you know, that was starting with Saturdays. So that was, you know, a little bit of shake up. But, and there also I had a very, very kind and very uh, uh, wonderful mentor, uh, Madara Mehta, who really uh, took you under his wing and you, you know, it was none of this go and uh, give me this uh, right of opinion. It was come sit with me, we'll do this together, you know. So you also learned the thought process, what you did, you got all the books, you did the research. So it was a very wonderful, I had very, uh, I was very lucky. I had very, uh, like I said, uh, you know, fun loving, very kind uh, mentors. And that sort of allowed me to, to kind of, uh, you know, progress. Uh, and, you know, which also taught me that, yes, you know, you can have, you can be yourself. You don't have to be, you know, sitting there and putting your head in the books and papers. And that uh, there was there were other things also to enjoy. You know, the law itself, but there were things about the law and linked to the law that you could also enjoy. And you know, there was great fun in the law itself. Yeah, it's a very interesting perspective, and uh, one we don't hear often. And especially in today's generation, you don't hear that kind of talk about you know. Uh, especially the youngsters, having fun while practicing the law. It's normally a much more intense environment now. But uh, Men Menika, over to you, because you also, when we were doing our prep run, mentioned you enjoy doing the law. It's a lot of fun, um, even though you've also tackled some very serious kind of subjects over your career. So just talk us, you know, through your kind of journey as well. Well, firstly, um, thanks to Unstituted um, for having me. Um, and it's a real privilege, you know, to be um, in conversation um, uh, with, you know, an extraordinary lawyer like Dina Wadia. Um, you know, I think, um, uh, you know, Dina has blazed the trail um, and has made it possible for so many of us to imagine uh, careers in the law, you know. So I think what she's saying here uh, about her uh, journey starting is hugely important um, because the start of her journey meant in some ways uh, the start of journeys like mine. Um, um, because uh, I suspect, you know, we are not the norm in many ways uh, when we started out. Um, so thanks for having me. Um, you know, I completely agree with Dina. You know, so much of the practice of law uh, and being a lawyer uh, for me um, is just a joyous thing. It's a lot of work. Uh, but it's hugely, hugely enjoyable. It's hugely fun. Um, and it is intertwined with exactly the, lesson, the lessons that Dina's mentors gave her, um, that life is larger. Uh, it is important to have a life outside of the law. Um, and the interests you have in your life outside will actually make you uh, probably better lawyers because you will have these rich experiences to bring into a negotiation room or courtroom. You will have stories to tell. You will have jokes to crack. Um, you will have books and literature to fall back on. Um, I, uh, the most crucial decision I made as a lawyer when, was when I was 19 years old, um, I was a law student. Uh, in Bangalore uh, from a law school, which in my first year hadn't graduated any batches. So this was a real punt, right? Uh, my parents are not lawyers. Uh, they're fabulous, but they're not lawyers. Um, and the most crucial decision I made was I decided to go intern um, with the then, with great trepidation, the then Attorney General of India, Ashok Desai. It was singularly the most definitive thing I had done in my life. And what I loved then, and I still remember what it felt like, what I loved then is I loved that it was a cerebral office. Um, you know, he didn't move into the attorney general's official accommodations. He lived in his home. Um, he worked out of his basement office um, and the walls around were full of books uh, of, yeah, sure, constitutional law and contracts, uh, but also poetry. Uh, and also literature. 
um, and um, I'd grown up in a home uh, of a lot of books um, and a lot of music. Um, and uh, that was also what I went into when I went into Ashok Desai's chamber. And at the end of that month, um, I remember kind of mustering up the courage um, and, uh, you know, going up to him at the end of the day, it was my last day of the internship saying, you know, sir, I graduate in a year. Uh, can I come back to join your office? Uh, and he said to me, yeah, sure. But on one condition, you know, you need to call me Ashok. There is no hierarchy here. <laughs> um, and I said then at the age of 19, what I kept saying till I was 45, yes, sir, Ashok, bhai, I will call you Ashok. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, you know, uh, Ashok Desai passed away um, early into the lockdown um, last year um, in March. Uh, I was planning to go to Bombay uh, for a matter, actually, uh, and um, we made plans, you know. Uh, I was coming for a, to argue a case uh, in Bombay at the NCLT, and, and we made plans to catch up, you know, hopefully get breakfast or, or lunch, and he was in Bombay at that time. So this was, you know, two months before I knew I was coming. I was super excited. I'd see my senior, and then, you know, I'd go and argue this case. Um, uh, and I guess, you know, it was not to be, um, but really, uh, so much of the joy I find is the joy I learned from him, you know, to have that joy um, for life, uh, to have that joy for books, uh, knowledge, um, and to have a lifelong quest for knowledge, which is what the law enables for me. Um, uh, you know, you started this by saying, um, you know, he treated me as if my mind was equal to his. What was remarkable about that is my mind is not equal to his. His was far ahead of mine, far superior. But he made each of his juniors feel um, like, you know, we're special. Uh, we're very special. Um, uh, and, and, and we are, we befit, you know, being there uh, and we deserve to be taken seriously. Um, and I realized that because we had a memorial for him uh, uh, you know, on the one year anniversary and there were these juniors and really remarkable lawyers. Dina will know some of them from the Bombay Bar, um, each of whom uh, had been made to feel special by him. So yeah, that's where I get my love for the law from. It's a, very, it's a very beautiful message actually in the way you just portrayed that relationship because um, like I said, it's very fortunate that you managed to get someone so young and someone inspiring because it's helped shape your career in a very positive way. So I have a question here. It looks like you both, you know, both Dina and Menika, in your respective journeys early on, I think, were probably taught the importance of certain qualities, such as introspection, integrity, humility, and humor, something that you both sort of really bring to the table and, you know, between yourselves also really connected over, right? Could you maybe, Menika, tell us a little bit about the importance of introspection and humor, and then we'll hear from Dina on the importance of sort of integrity and humor. It'll be nice to just, you know, hear your thoughts on how these attributes help us in our professional sort of, uh, not just to grow, but also sort of hold us in good stead, right? While, while we're doing what we're doing. You want me to go first? Um, you know, so I think that one of the most interesting things of, about being a human being, if you will, right, um, is that we as human beings have the capacity to introspect. Um, and it's a, it's a I, I don't want to call it an old fashioned trait, but it's something that struck me, um, even if, you know, if you read about the founders of this country, right, whether it's Patel or Nehru or Gandhi, or, you know, and they all happen to be lawyers. Right? They all happened to be lawyers. What really struck me was that each of them was remarkably introspective. Um, there was doubt. Uh, there was a conversation with self. If you read their letters, you'll, you'll see that. Um, and I think that it is, it is actually a very important trait to bring um, to our own lives, uh, professional and personal. Um, to think through things, um, to understand, to ask yourself, well, you know, is there another way of approaching this? Perhaps I was wrong, perhaps I'm right. Um, not to kind of beat yourself up about a bad hearing, 
never to second guess yourself, but to kind of think about it dispassionately, uh, creatively, if you will, to see how, how would I approach this at a different time? Um, I think it's one of the most interesting things about being a lawyer because every new case, every new area um, uh, makes you confront um, not just new information and not just new statutes, but also, well, how would you tell the story in a courtroom? Right? I mean, that's, that's the heart of it, you know, whether um, we are commercial lawyers, we are litigators, we are also at the heart of it storytellers. Uh, we are conveying uh, a client's perspective, a solicitor's perspective, um, and we're trying to do so um, in a way that it is received. Um, uh, you know, it's not a coincidence that we're called advocates. You know, we advocate. Um, so I think that um, that to me is, is an important quality. And I think humor, I, I mean, for your viewers, and I know Dina and I have talked about this, we both... I think love laughter. Um, and I just find that humor is so very, very important, especially if you're in a stressful occupation, um, to be able to laugh it off, you know, whether it's in a courtroom or whether it's in a very tense uh, client meeting. Um, I think that, you know, it, it is important because it helps you diffuse things, but it also brings you clarity. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I saw my senior deploying humor so effectively, you know, um, I think the twinkle in, uh, in, in your eyes is often a very, very potent um, instrument, um, not just to get through life, but also get through that day in court, you know, so I'll stop there. Well said. Thank you. That's, that's a great share, Menika. Dina, over to you. And maybe you want to focus a little bit on attributes that are important to you. Humor, of course, being one of them. Yeah. So for me, uh, you know, I it's, it's funny, you know, when we did a little pre-thing, how much Menek and I really think quite alike. Yeah. And the, the same uh, attributes and the same uh, strengths and, you know, what you take from the law and, you know, is it, remarkably similar. Uh, I would say that, you know, uh, one of the key things, you know, that we need to have, you know, apart from your learning and your ability to, you know, deal with clients, is just basically, you know, we don't make anything, right? We don't sell in that sense anything. We sell a service in a way that we are our mind. And therefore, you know, all you have really is your reputation. Uh, and reputation is everything in this profession, whether you are trusted, whether you can be relied upon. Therefore, you know, at the heart of it lies sort of, uh, you know, integrity. That uh, uh, without that, you know, you, I don't think really you will go far in this profession or in any profession or, uh, uh, you know, sphere of life. And, you know, sometimes as uh, lawyers, uh, you know, people don't come to us, uh, you know, to be, they, because they come to us when they need a solution or they're in some difficulty. They don't want to be, you know, uh, so really, and sometimes you, you know, you are uh, asked whether a particular solution can be viable and it's sometimes, you know, not quite so, but you must, you know, be able to and the courage to stand up and say that, look, you know, that's not possible or I, you know, and I certainly uh, cannot do it or will not do it or will not give you something that when it's better to walk away uh, in such situations than, uh, than compromise. So I think, you know, sometimes, you know, it, it leads into your, you know, you need to hold firm to your values. Uh, and that also, you know, sort of linking into that is also, uh, I would say, you know, a certain uh, way that you treat, uh, you know, other people also with, uh, with integrity, with compassion, with, you know, with an understanding, uh, you know, whether they be your colleagues or your uh, juniors or, you know, or, and most importantly, your clients. Uh, so, 
you know that as i said that you know reputation is everything and that's something that you know i value most is integrity uh of course as menerica says humor the law and law the lawyers are full of ridiculous characters you know uh, <laughs> who lend themselves every day i mean uh you know bar libraries as menerica will say and i spent a fair amount of time in my earlier years uh, you know before liberalization when litigation was really the only game in town Yeah. uh you know in bar libraries and uh, bar rooms and it was like a den of gossip you know the guys are unbelievable you know they say women gossip we have nothing on them you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, but it is really fun and you know there would be bar room uh, bar library meetings where they would be looking for an increase of 5 bucks you know and the amount of guys that would get up and oppose this Vehemently, you know, five rupees. I mean, and then you'd ask somebody and say, "Who's this guy?" The fellow would say, "Broker." You'd want to say, "What do you mean, broker?" Then somebody else, "Who's that broker?" It was the days of uh, Harshad Mehta at his peak, you know, in the Bombay stock market at his peak, and everybody's second profession in the bar room was, you know, dealing in shares. So, uh, you know, you just have characters uh, yeah. everywhere, you know. So it lends itself. Uh, uh to that and you know as i said that you know the we don't have to be so serious you know all the time of course you know you have to be conscientious in your work do it well you know uh, the client has to be satisfied but you don't need to be a dour serious person you know uh you must have you know a sense of fun a sense of lightness and i think uh, the quality of you know being able to lighten a mood or lighten a room is not to be scoffed at you know it uh, it breaks barriers it uh, uh, eases uh, tensions uh, i used to have you know for many years uh, the pink panther theme as my uh, as my ringtone <laughs> yeah and uh, even now it's you know it's something not the usual but it used to sort of uh, you know it, it made people smile you know so you would then get into a little side conversation and all that sort of heavy stuff would be forgotten for a few minutes and then you'd move on but uh, so you know humor is important uh, it's just life's too short thank and, you for uh, saying yeah. that deena and menaka it is something that the community at large really needs to learn of maybe from the both of you and those who think like you because i know for a fact that when we start out as interns we're consistently told put your head down pretend to work you know if you've got no work look serious you know these are the kind of dictates that are constantly sort of rolled out right i remember there was a senior associate who once said be a parleyji biscuit don't be whipped cream now what does that mean what what that senior associate meant is if you are in a cup of chai go right down to the bottom and look like sunken and serious don't be light and floozy like whipped cream and it was possibly the worst analogy ever but it is so descriptive uh, you know to understand that oh, keep yeah. humor out right keep humor out so thanks thanks both of you for saying that uh, because i think you've got the next question for them so please yeah i just i want to reiterate what alicia was saying because the kind of interpretation or impression we have of the law is more from you know a few good men or sunny the old kind of you know, courtroom battles but to hey you talking about you know bringing humor in pink panther normally we would probably think godfather brings you not pink panther <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's great that you know like you're right because we know that it's a serious profession and and lawyers are known to just take themselves really seriously so for you to look at you know we can have fun and yet still be serious about our work and be lifelong learners and in, you know not compromise the quality of what we're doing but we you know why do we have to be so serious about it so just just a quick one for the next question so i think dina kind of mentioned her pink panther theme tune is one of her tips tricks for lightening the mood melika do you have one of those you know yeah i um usually crack a joke when i you know meet um uh, you know anyone really for the first time um and there is i mean not at the person 
note to young people do not crack a joke about someone you met for the first time crack a joke about yourself or the weather or whatever um so i really do but you know i think part of it is it's just you know and i think dina will agree with this you know it's a profession where we work very hard right it's a hard working profession uh but you also just meet super interesting people it's not that tough to have a good time because the people you meet are just really really interesting um and i think you know in 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 the earlier chat that we had you know i i said this and i just kind of want to reiterate it like there are just interesting stories you get to engage um as a lawyer um there are new areas uh where the human race will interact with legislation which may be constitutional or unconstitutional but it's certainly going to make your world turn around i mean look at law and technology today um uh, look at the new digital media rules ott platform rules there are data privacy bill you know all of this is happening in this month right uh, so you are being asked as lawyers to reimagine uh the interface of the human footprint with legislation um there are few occupations you know maybe i'm just too you know sunk into mind there are a few occupations that through interesting stories and 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 force you to confront new footprints of the state with such regularity uh and force you to expand your mind with such regularity um than the law does uh whatever facet whether you are a solicitor a uh, counsel uh, a partner at big firm a partner at a small firm whatever aspect uh of the law you choose to engage with you are forced to encounter these changes of our way of life um and i think that's really it's the best ice breaker because every human being trust me on this has an interesting story every human being um and that's the best ice breaker you know um that can be i you know i just love the way that you describe the law full of stories and interesting people you know and it's such a great perspective because again kind of impression you get especially the young lawyers that are moving into mna corporate adversarial law it's it's much more serious but you know the fact that you can say look you're always looking for there's an interesting story in every case you're dealing with so i think that's a beautiful way of again looking at you know this as a career um and as a subject just i think the last question would we'll move ahead of what you were saying in medica about you know we've got data privacy issues coming up you know there's ip issues there's tech um so what do you think the future of law is looking like especially in a kind of post pandemic world yeah no i think it's a very good question and i know i'm sure dina confronts this right now but the the most significant change in our way of life um not just as lawyers but any occupation today um is how digital our personality has become how digital our occupation has become um the interface of law and technology uh in many commercial law firms in 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 the us for instance software and algorithms are doing the job of the young associates um we are in virtual court today not in physical court um we have to interpret um digital media guidelines we have to think through the fact that we don't really have a data privacy law yet it's going to be debated next week um but we do have to think about well where does attorney client privilege lie in a zoom call you know um we do have to think about these things um today our lives are governed more and more by algorithms uh by likes on online uh than ever before and technology is shaping and reshaping how we practice law whether it's commercial law or whether it's otherwise in in, in a courtroom um yesterday i think the chief justice spoke about um you know uh sort of live telecast of proceedings in the supreme court yeah it's huge you know if that happens it will change the face of courtrooms because the public will be able to see the business of litigation the business of adjudication and the business of advocacy and the public and the media will have much to say about it no doubt so india and the indian supreme court decides 
huge uh, issues of importance, huge issues that shape the way we get to live our life. Um, and that decision making will be up um, and available to all citizens. And it's wonderful if that happens. It's really, really wonderful if that happens. You know, I tune in uh, the Gujarat uh, High Court's Chief Justice, um, live telecasts his courtroom. Um, so I love tuning in every once in a while. And I'll see these very nicely dressed lawyers, very well prepared. And you kind of feel like, wow, this is great, you know? Um, so I think in the next year, not that this hasn't happened in the last year, but in the next year, you will see a complete change in very deep substantive ways in the way at least litigation is going to play out and in the way we give advice and how we interact um, with clients, with solicitors, with judges. All of this is going to be hugely reshaped. It has already been reshaped by technology and by the virtual world. Um, super for so, um, Dina, over to you. I mean, obviously you're, you're from you know, a slightly different perspective. You've seen how tech is playing out in the law firm, the law firm point of view. So same kind of question, you know, what do you think the future yeah. of practicing law is looking like in this post-pandemic? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think Meneka is, you know, so articulate. She's just so wonderfully articulate. Uh, and it's so wonderful to hear her. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we knew even before the pandemic, quite frankly, that, you know, tech was going to be a very, very large part of our lives. We already started seeing it in some of these uh, programs that we've been putting in to help with diligence and things that like, you know, which is a kind of an AI stuff. But uh, the pandemic has, of course, you know, accelerated it. And I think has made uh, everybody far more comfortable with it. Uh, I think the younger uh, lot is already very comfortable with technology, and that, and the older lot. I mean, I personally, I you know, I consider myself reasonably tech savvy. So even in the older lot, but you know, not quite that category. But I think the rest have had to learn and learn very quickly, and. You know, the courtroom side has been wonderful. I don't do uh, litigation as such anymore. I, you know, I have colleagues in other cities who handle matters, but it's been wonderful to tune in uh, and attend these hearings in all over the country. Uh, I think one wonderful consequence of uh, live streaming is you'll get a whole different cast of character actors. Uh, <laughs> playing, <laughs> playing to the gallery. You know? <laughs> I'm sure Menaka will tell you there are lots of guys in court who, after they think they made some wonderful point and turn around to see if it has yes. been appreciated. You know? <laughs> we've, we've all met lots of counsel like that, you know, pompous gates, half of them, but anyway. <laughs> but so, yes, so tech is going to be the heart, at the heart of everything. And even the new. All the businesses are going to be, you know, have got, going to have tech at its very heart. Uh, so whether you talk about pharma, you talk about uh, manufacturing, anything, you know, it's all banking. I do, you know, I'm in finance. Everything is going to have tech at its heart. So it will be the driver. You know, it's like it sits at the center of all. If you look at a diagram, you want to, it just will be the connector. And it will throw up its own challenges because, uh, you know, we know that, you know, laws, it's moving so fast that our law and regulation is not, you know, is, it will, will struggle to catch up with it. You know, and I was sort of listening to somebody the other day, you know, on, a, on things on regulations and stuff like that. I think we have to have our regulations that will be enabling, that will be, that will enable taking into account the very rapid challenge, you know, changes that are going to happen. Otherwise, you will just be, you know, hitting barriers and people, and you know how, you know, things are legislated here. We don't follow, sadly, in most cases, a principles-based approach. We, you know, we go for a rules-based approach. So you will get some 
bureaucrat who will tell you, show me where it is written, you know. And this, this, this time is too fast for that, you know. So I think it will sort of change the way we need to think about regulations. And I think, you know, young uh, lawyers who are, you know, also at the forefront of some of these niche areas uh, will also, you know, play a very important part in, uh, you know, in helping shape that. Uh, you know, we uh, we really, you know, we need to be because you know the same old, same old law uh, is not going to cut it. I tell young people and our younger colleagues that you have to find a differentiator. Today, you know, all of us, uh, at least I, grew up in a stage of very general practice. Okay, and I think it's wonderful, and I think it's something that all law students must do a stint of litigation at some point, you know? It just gives you a different perspective. But it, that's not going to cut it. You need to uh, value add, you know? You need to show that you bring something different. There's so many lawyers out there today. It's so competitive. So, you know, the way to... And then there's, and then there's so much scope, actually. You know, there are so many sectors, there are sunrise sectors, they are sort of old economy being, you know, looked at uh, again, tech enabled. It's exciting stuff happening. And as, you know, Minika says that, you know, one of the greatest things about law is that basically it holds your interest. Yeah. Oh, uh, there's uh, something new all the time. You're not in that same rut. Uh, if you were, if you were in a particular uh, you know, corporate or dealing with a particular product or a set of products, you know, you see everything, you see all types of industry, you see all shades of people, you get, you know, different, uh, uh, you know, different problems and, you know, you never thought of something and, you know, somebody will give you, a, it's just the interaction with people, which is, uh, which I hope, you know, is not going to be replaced by too much tech because you know zoom calls and all are fine but you actually feed off uh you know your colleagues clients you know sitting around a table uh you know we've done this for this time it's great technology uh, you know has been wonderful we it happened let us say you know it's a bad thing to happen but it happened when to some extent the world was technologically prepared and you know it did not we could get on with, uh, you know, our lives and doing, you know, our work. So it is going to be, you know, at the heart of everything and very much here to stay and, you know. But it's, yeah, it's great. You can make it your friend. It doesn't have to be your enemy. You can make it your friend. Mm. Yeah, I, th I think great points by <clears throat> both Udina and Menken. Also remembering while technology is moving towards the heart of what we do, it shouldn't replace people's hearts at the end of the day. Because, you know, connecting face to face physically, having those Absolutely. Um, inter, you know, serendipity comes from, you know, when you're actually able to just chat to someone like Menica said, you crack a joke and then something comes out of that. Um, so I think you're right that we shouldn't just devote, you know, devote everything to technology once we get back to a more open environment. Um, so I think great thoughts across all the questions we've asked. Um, yeah, it's been great running this, this first part of the, the, the session. We're now going to move over to uh, the bit we call the interrogation. Um, and if it's getting too serious, Menica, please don't crack any jokes. And Dina, don't put your ringtone on. All right. All right. Alicia, over to you. Thanks, Vikas. Okay. Thank you, Dina. Thank you, Menica. This was good. But I'm actually personally looking forward to the interrogation. Uh, we're encouraging you to be spontaneous. We're encouraging you to bring the humor we spoke of all throughout. And uh, you know, just have fun with these questions. So are we ready? Yeah. <laughs> so we'll start with you, Dina, and then the same set of questions we'll switch to you, Menika. All right. So we'll start with you, Dina. Your first question, what will instantly put a smile on your face? Seeing a tiger. Sorry? Seeing a tiger. Seeing a tiger. Lovely. Lovely. Okay. Your second question, Dina. If there is one quality you could throw around like confetti, 
what would it be? My quality or somebody else's? A generic quality that you think the world probably needs more of. So you're just going to be sprinkling it generously. Laughter. 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 How nice. Okay. What is your favorite family recipe? I can't cook to save my life. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. But, but is there... Is also there. <laughs> is there... Is there maybe a particular food item that the family is, you know, you've kind of passed on historically that... My, I, I can't cook. My mother couldn't cook to save her life either. So I don't think there's anything really. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll change the question a bit in your case. Okay. So tell us what, like, if you had to go, say, pick one food item, okay, to eat for the rest of your life, what would you pick? Oh, God. Tough one. Dina's feeling the pressure. Really? I suppose uh, some kind of eggs, I guess. Uh, you know, you can do lots with them, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Parsis, Parsis love eggs, uh, allegedly, but yeah. <laughs> okay, super. Your next question. What three items would you take with you if you were to go off on an island for a month? A wind-up radio, okay. because there'd be no electricity. Uh, a fat book. Okay. Uh, and I don't really know. I mean, I guess something that could amuse you, like a, like a Rubik cube or something, which no. I was never ever tried to crack. I've never spent enough time, but you know, no electricity, so no gizmos. <laughs> Fair. All right. Next question. If you were a ruler of your own country, what would be the first law you would introduce in this imaginary country? Oh dear. First law. Abolish caste, I don't know. Nice. Hmm. All right. Your next question. How would your 10-year-old self react to what you do now? You must be crazy or, you know, no way. <laughs> yeah. Absolute disbelief. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice. Okay. An activity that can instantly calm you down. Mm. An activity. Yes. I guess uh, reading uh, a good book. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And mm. what's the last thing you do at night before going to bed? I read. You read. Okay. Mm. Lovely. Well done. We're now moving to Menaka, and then we'll come back to you with the next set of questions. Menaka, are you ready? Yeah. I okay. think it's a bit unfair because actually, you know, if Dina always goes first, then I always have a little no, we'll time switch. to respect. Yeah. No, no, we'll switch. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. So what will instantly put a smile on your face, Menaka? Uh, two tigers would be great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, then... I have to say, I was so taken in by the tigers behind as a kid. And even now, my dad and I love to go see tigers. Uh, and I think it's the one thing he misses the most now in the pandemic. So, yeah. All right. If there was one quality you could throw around like confetti, what is it that you throw around? Um, laughter one, but I think integrity, you okay. know, and something that Dina spoke about. Integrity. Okay. All around. Yeah. Super. What is your favorite family recipe? Do you have uh, I can't cook. My mom can't cook. I want to just <laughs> tell you this. My dad was, is, is the cook in the family. Uh, so tell he makes well. Sorry? Something that oh, he makes So well. he, uh, great biryani. Like just yeah. great. Oh, yeah. yeah, and with tomato cut, which is a Hyderabadi, you know, thing. So you have biryani and you have tomato cut. Oh, yeah. Okay, nice. All right, so you're off to an island for a month. What are the three items you're taking with you? 
Um, I think uh, a fat book. Okay. Uh, hopefully, Dina will be on a neighboring island, so then we'll be able to like swap these fat books, you know, on a raft. Um, uh, a, a fat book, um, a volleyball. I think is is more durable than a basketball. Okay. Um, and um, I, you know, I love radio. I didn't think of the wind up bit, but I am a radio fan. I listen to the radio every single day. Um, so I don't know this island. Does it have good connectivity for the radio? It does. It does. And I just had one other question since we're going to be stuck on this island. Actually, sure. on this island, would Zomato be delivering at this island or not? Absolutely. <laughs> Whatever you want. That's fine. Yeah. That's what we get. No issues. No issues. No issues at all. You can survive. Okay, lovely. All right, your next question. That, that if, might just help their IPO there. Like we've now got yes, an oversubscribed yeah. IPO, might I add. Yeah. <laughs> Even those of us on different islands with our fat books want in on that IPO. <laughs> <laughs> all right. If you were a ruler of your country, what is the first law you would introduce? You know, real, actual universal healthcare. Like that people can really access with public hospitals all over the country, including in parts of this country where there are really no public hospitals, um, especially in this time um, of COVID, but just access to health. Okay, super. How would your 10-year-old self react to what you do now? Uh, my 10-year-old self mostly hung out with my Labrador called Tora, and my 10-year-old self would say, dude, really? <laughs> Again, absolute disbelief. Yeah. Like, really? Okay. What activity instantly calms you down, Medika? Um, actually, yoga, stretching, you know, uh, it really does. Yeah. Super. And uh, what is the last thing you do uh, before going to bed at night? Um, also read. Read. Uh, I have, I'm sure Dina also, I've just got multiple books next to my bed. Super. Uh, yeah. Rikas, over to you. You can start with Menika now if you like. I will do. Um, actually, both of you, Menika, what are you reading at the moment? Um, I'm reading uh, a book called Amazon Unbound about Jeff Bezos and a fabulous book um, on artificial intelligence called Alignment. Superb. Just superb. Yeah. And Dina? reading any actual books at the moment, but I read a lot of current affairs. So I subscribe to a lot of uh, periodicals. So I read the New Yorker, the Atlantic, the Spectator, the UK papers, our papers. I read newspapers at night. I'm not a morning person. Yeah. <laughs> so I catch up on all that. So I read a lot of current affairs and uh, uh, a bit of interest now in history and politics, just, uh, you know, uh, so that's my reading. Okay, super. <clears throat> right. Medka, over to you. And then Dina's gonna listen in on this section. Uh, at a party, uh -oh. where can someone find you? Near the bar, of course, or in front of the bar. <laughs> right. She's a very and serious lawyer. And very close to the appetizers, which are being moved around. So I've immediately made eye contact with the uh, servers. I've cracked a joke, so they instantly like me and everyone else is ignoring them. So there's food um, and, you know, I'm close to the bar. Right. Center of the party. Yeah. Uh, what song would you say best sums you up? Ooh. Um, oh, my. Oh, my. Um, you know, there's a Bobby McFerrin song, uh, which he put together a long, long time ago called Don't Worry, Be Happy. Uh, it's my generation, because not yours, we're way younger. It used to be a thing. Um, and, um, you know, yeah, yeah. But I'm also the kind of, um, Pink Floyd generation, uh, the wall, you know, uh, and shine on you crazy diamond. Yeah. So, I don't know if any of it sums me up, but this is the music in my head. Yeah. Um, if you had to describe yourself as an animal, Ooh. we have the answer already. Which one would it be and why? 
Oh my, my my. Um, so I think, I think a Labrador really. You know, they eat a lot. Um, they're fun. Um, you know, they love to swim, um, and they're just very friendly. Okay. <laughs> right. uh, and what's your favorite quote from either a TV show, movie, or book? Um, you know, I I actually follow like so I don't know if it's a you know, I'm not sure that you know I could think of something from a TV show, movie, or book, but I follow a little app where which is like a uh, like this white dude in Colorado teaches yoga. Like it's one of the apps I follow. It's like a power yoga thing. It was very funny because he recently said, um, you know, live long and twist. Um, and I loved it, right? Because it's a spoof on um, live long and prosper, which is what Spock says in Star Trek, yeah. um, which also dates me. Um, so I love it because live long and twist is a great life philosophy, right? It's not just about exercise, but, you know, when you're in these situations and you just want to kind of like twist a little bit and, and figure out a way. So I, I love that. Right, super. Um, tell us about a practical joke that you pulled off really well. Wow. That's a tough one. You're taking notes, I can see that. Yeah, I, I, you know, that's a really hard one. I'm trying to think of any practical joke that I pulled off um, really well. Um, usually I don't pull them off really well because- I pull off. Yeah, because my partner's super smart and figures this out like well in advance. So like I have just no skill set uh, at being able to pull off a practical joke uh, with any degree of uh, adeptness. So I think I will fail on that. If we were doing Karan Johar, like coffee with Karan, the hamper, Dina would get the hamper. Uh -huh. Point, this is a fail. Or, or a practical joke you thought, this is going to be great, but didn't pull it off. Uh -huh. This is going to be great. Um, you know, for, for the longest, like when I was much younger, for the longest time I would, uh, when I was in college, I would answer my phone and pretend I was a Chinese takeaway restaurant. And, um, you know, a lot of my friends would fall for it. And so I must have been like 21, 22. Uh, and so I answered the phone saying whatever, you know, Chinese takeaway restaurant. Uh, and, you know, got all of it, including, sorry, I mean, I apologize for this. I see wisdom now, but including with the Chinese accent and all that stuff. I have this like Chinese person persona, which, you know, I also have an English person persona. And I, I, I do these accents like... Sometimes the Chinese person talks to the English person, you know, and this happens simultaneously. And, you know, I'm very lucky that um, I, you know, bought all of this out after 10 years of being in a relationship and not in year one, because uh, I don't know how it would have panned out. So anyway, so one day I was in college and I answered the phone and I'm not going to do it on your show because I've been told that this is not how you can be we an do, we do. No, we love, we love this stuff. I, think you I, I, I really, really shouldn't. You could order, should we order something? And so I answered the phone saying, so and so, you know, blah, 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 in this Chinese accent, you know, Chinese takeaway, may I help you? You know, we have free wontons with every uh, delivery today above the, you know, above like whatever, 15 pounds. I was in college in the UK. And on the other end, uh, the voice said, uh, yes, this is... Um, you know, as a so and so from Harvard Law School, and I was just trying to reach, you know, Manaka Guruswami because we have an offer for admission for her. But wow. really, uh, I got the wrong number, and I was like, "No, no, it's me!" And so this lady on the other end, who is now, you know, as you know, as a begins part of Harvard Law School, said, "It's you," and said, <laughs> "It's not so, but that was." a decent imitation, but let me tell you something. I am Chinese American and we don't sound like that. Yeah. Oh my God. What a good first impression to make on a school that I would eventually attend and I wanted to go to. Not good. I, you know, I really stopped that for like a few years, you know, so now I have a British voice. Oh my God. Bring her. 
Yes, you have in fact reached Menika Goswami's phone. May I help you? No, no, no. She's not here right now. She's actually away, you know, litigating a big case and saving the world. Really, I'm like watching Netflix, you know, or Amazon Prime, like some like war movie, but anyway. Maybe you, you are, if I could stand up and clap for you right now, I totally would, but I can't. So I'm just going to sit down and clap. This is really, really, definitely one of the funniest stories we've heard in a long time, haven't we, Vikas? Oh, no. did, did, did that persona have a name? You know, I have been told not to share any of this because <laughs> since then, in the last 25 years, we now take the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, non-discrimination, ICCPR, all kinds of things much more seriously. Okay. I have been asked to lock this part of myself away. Let's just keep it between us then. All right. All right. So how, onto a much more serious question, how do you define beauty? Uh, I, you know, really intelligence meets happiness. Wow. Very different. Um, how can someone gain your trust? Oh, um, by being honest. And that's a good thing, you know, especially clients who are, you know, guilty. It's good. Mm. Be honest. That's fine. Yeah. To me only, I'm not the authorities. <laughs> <laughs> me. Doesn't need to go. All right. I think you could you could easy switch to it. You should be with is it Kamal Kamra? Look, I would have loved to. I envy him. Brilliant. Yeah, I envy him. I'm like, you make a living cracking jokes, and I have been told to tone it down. <laughs> right, Dina, we're gonna go over to you. Here we go. Um, so at a party, where can someone find you? On the balcony, sneaking a smoke. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> I'll bring you a drink. With a drink, yes. I'll bring the drink, yes. Um, what song would you say best sums you up? You are my sunshine. It's a great song. <clears throat> um, if you had to describe yourself as an animal, which one would it be and why? Really? You're asking me? Yeah, I mean, really, like you can see them. Yeah. Tigers, yeah. <laughs> but why? Oh, she's just the queen of the jungle. End of story. <laughs> um, what's your favorite quote? from TV show, movie, book, or something else? I, I don't sort of, sort of really have one, but I have always remembered uh, the Hippocratic Oath as something to live by. And that's what I try to follow as much as I can, which is do no harm. Um, tell us about a practical joke that you pulled off really well. If you didn't pull it off, one you tried anyway. You know, Menika has just far more on me one day. I mean, I don't think I ever did a practical joke. Uh, I must have, but I can't readily remember. But there were always group uh, things. So there were a lot of prank calls. Uh, to unsuspecting uh, people when we were younger. I mean, you know, they would, there were no cell phones. Uh, we didn't have all the distractions we do today. There was no TV, actually, you know, when we were... Uh, TV came uh, much later. So our source of amusement was, you know, I, you know, go out and play, which I think, you know, a lot of these kids today have lost, and go out and play a sport. Uh, or the other instrument was the phone. So, you know, to ring up somebody and talk nonsense or, 
you know by by chance you would get some person who answered you back and that that number was to be noted and you know played and milked for what it was worth but i can't think of any particular instance we used to get have great fun doing that yeah. uh you know in that sense but i can't think of anybody that i've pranked uh in that sense yeah super how do you define beauty um i would you know obviously i i would go with what menika said you know uh, honesty uh just a, you know a kind good person you know it doesn't uh, looks uh, it's all in the eye of the beholder so uh, yeah. i just say a good good person yeah mm. kind honest yeah mm. and how can someone gain your trust by being straightforward yeah uh, you know which is i, I guess another way of saying uh honest but just being straightforward you know don't uh, don't give me a lot of bs around it just come straight you know to the point be direct uh, i don't like uh, all this sort of you know chinese whispers going round and round you know uh, that's normally menka um no <laughs> just, just be direct. direct you know be direct we you know indians have a habit i think of you know thinking somebody may not like it or trying to you know pussy foot around things and not coming to the point that drives me nuts just yeah. just come to the point you know uh, so yeah. yeah be straightforward hmm. and now back to the thing menika i'm going to come back to you now so what is something you get wrong almost every time that you do it um hmm interesting isn't that like repetitive bad behavior isn't that like the definition of insanity um yeah no so you know it's it's funny but um there's a park nearby in delhi um and you know i don't know if you've been to it it's called sundar uh, nagar biodiversity park it's beautiful it's an eco heritage park restored by the aga khan foundation it's stunning there's water there's peacocks there's trees you know there's monuments it's adjoining humayun stream it's beautiful i love this place this is my favorite place in delhi right um and every summer and every fall um i wake up and um i i look at the sky outside um and the odd days when you know i don't have a very early hearing i'm like it's cool enough to go to the park today i will not sweat i did that today as well you know so dragged off the better half went off to the park i always get it wrong it is always hot from april to october in new delhi <laughs> there is not one morning when it is not warm and we go through this process you know and i'll be like but it felt cool briefly when i stuck my head out and now in this beautiful park you're kind of taken in you know you had said well, what is your definition of beauty this is beautiful right it's stunning uh and you sweat because delhi has high heat plus humidity it's a perfect combination um and it's i it's something i i get wrong all the time uh i tell my unsuspecting you know colleagues sometimes you know if they want to have a chat i said well feels like a nice day maybe we should just go to the park for a walk and spend 40 minutes there doing two rounds around tombs of humayun's cousins and they're like no oh, man it's really really hot and the monsoons are 5 months away so I'm like okay so this is like it's a daily phenomenon or a weekly phenomenon as the case may be okay fair okay what's the funniest or weirdest text or email that you've ever received oh. professionally professionally oh my there've been oh, so person. many but i you know like um hmm you know i can't think of anything off the top of my head i mean i don't know if it would come to dinner quickly but off the top of my head i cannot think of anything 
Okay. Or you can even say personally, if you like. I mean, if not personally. personally. Oh my. That brings it closer home. I'm probably the one sending inappropriate messages uh, or texts. Yeah. Um, oh my God. You know, uh, well, well, for the longest time, you know, uh, I was when I was in hostel in, in Bangalore, you know, there was one phone uh, for the whole girls' hostel. Uh, and, you know, my parents would call. Um, and, um, you know, my mom and dad, especially my mom would ask me the same question, you know, uh, which is, have you eaten enough? Do you have money? Are you sleeping okay? And so this would be like the standard conversation. Imagine this was before cell phones. There was just one telephone, you know, in this little room and somebody else would pick up the phone because, you know, you were living in some other part. And um, so this was a conversation that everyone was familiar with. So, you know, at one point, a classmate answered the phone and said, oh, hi, auntie. I'm just going to call her. And then call me saying, Menika, it's your mother. She wants to know if you've eaten enough, you've slept well, do you need anything and do you have enough money? So this was kind of like, and so by the time I bound it down, it was already like telecast. Um, and um, yeah, so it was just one of those moments where, you know, it was lack of technology meets life in like the early 90s in India, you know. Nice. Okay. All right. What's something that makes people think that they're really cool, but in your view, they're looking ridiculous? Oh, interesting. Oh, my. Uh, you know, it's, it's not so much that, uh, you know, I think we live a modern life today where kind of a display of wealth um, is really considered um, to be by a few maybe or some or whatever um, to be um, cool, you know? Um, and that's, it's, yeah, it's, you know, it, it is what it is. Yeah. All right. If you could steal one thing without consequences, what would you steal, Menika? Oh, the Mona Lisa. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have that this in my office, which it would just, there's one space reserved for it. I'm on it. I've like scoped out the Louvre, you know, I'm, I'm really on it. It's only a matter of time. I can tell because it didn't take time at all. This answer no, was... Uh, Dina, I have the space picked out, you know. It's like Dina has these three, four tigers and she's a tiger. Uh, I'm that friendly Labrador who's going to steal the Mona Lisa. Yeah. Okay. And your last question, Menika Griswami. What makes you go, what was I thinking when you look back on your life thus far? Um, I think, you know, as, as, you know, younger human beings, as a younger human being, um, you know, one, one did think, is any of this, would any of this be possible? For so many reasons, right? For so many reasons. Uh, you know, I am not the norm, you know, uh, in my profession. Um, and I think um, to my younger self uh, and to, I think, younger people, when I speak to them in colleges and you know, universities, and I, I do a fair amount of that. And the real reason why I do it is I want them to know, uh, and I'd like your viewers to know, that if my story is possible, then their story is possible. And that is what I would tell my younger self as well. That's really powerful. Thanks, Venika. All right, Dina, over to you. What is something that you get almost always you get managed to get it wrong? What is that one thing? So like Menika, to some extent, when we go to the jungles, uh, especially, you know, during the winter months, people don't realize that you are in the center of India, but it can be so freezingly cold yeah. in the morning. So that that many layers, this jacket, you invariably pack something wrong every single time. So it's just somehow, you know, I guess it's, uh, you know, both of us is wanderer of issues in a sense. But, <laughs> you know, I would just love to find that one 
universal jacket that I can take every single time. It's just, and I've got a cupboard full of them now. And so have my friends, you know, with so much experimenting, this one, that one. So that's, that's my, I just get it wrong every single time. Okay, fair. What's the funniest or weirdest text or email you may have received, Tina? You know, I honestly can't think of it. I'm sure they must have been. Uh, I mean, I can find even serious ones ridiculous, so I don't know. But uh, some of, because sometimes what the client expects from you, you really want to laugh and say, easy off his rocker, you know, anyway. So, uh, so I can't think of anything offhand, sorry. No, no, don't worry. We can move on to the next question. What yeah. is something that people think makes them look very cool, but actually makes them absolutely ridiculous? I don't know, sort of having everything of everything, you know, sort of too much bling, yeah. uh, you know, wearing, uh, you know, what is seen to be the latest of fashion, which will be utterly mismatched, you know, guys wearing these very metrosexual colors and, you know, 90% of them can't carry it off. They look stupid, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. So that, it's really, you know, not, not knowing, you know, that... <laughs> Understated is good. Yeah. Okay. If mm. you could steal one thing without consequences, what would you steal? Steal. I don't really know. I mean, I, I don't have an answer like Menika off the top of my head. <laughs> it's you not haven't been planning your thieving activities. <laughs> <laughs> wish that I, yeah, somewhere else that I had. I don't have that. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. And your last question, Dina, for this round. What makes you go, what was I thinking, when you look back on your life thus far? I don't really know whether I would say what was I thinking. Uh, I'd probably say that uh, I've been very lucky. Uh, I have, you know, things have panned out. I didn't think that, you know, I didn't really have a clear sense of direction when much younger, of course, very young was everybody, you know, you go through the usual, I want to be a doctor nonsense. But uh, I just think things have, you know, fallen into place. Serendipity has probably played, uh, serendipity and luck have, uh, you know, played a very large part in my life. It's, you know, I've had, my parents gave me uh, in that sense, the freedom to go in whichever direction. There was never, you must be this, or you must be that, or you must do this. So I think I've, I feel that I kind of muddled along early, but I kind of found my feet. Uh, so I think I've been lucky, you know, I, but, and I, maybe myself would be that, you know, you should be so lucky. So that, that's probably it, yeah. Super. Okay. Thank you, ladies. Y'all really answered the interrogation round very well and very meaningfully. So we appreciate it. Moving on to the last segment of this interview, we're going to talk about a memory each. It could be a thing or an incident that we'd request each of you to talk about a little bit, which sort of helps you, uh, you know, holds you in good stead in your professional journey. It's that thing or that conversation you go back to and draw strength from. So, is there something maybe that, uh, Menika, would you like to go first and then we can go back to the Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, as I, uh, uh, you know, grew older uh, and I started my own practice, uh, every couple of weeks, every two weeks, um, you know, I would have, uh, I would have a drink with my senior, you know, and if I went before six o'clock dinner, then it would be coffee. Uh, or tea with snacks because everyone knows I love food. Uh, and if I went around 6.30, uh, then it would be, you know, a glass of wine uh, with snacks. Um, and, um, you know, on a more serious note, you know, um, you know, and I would, we, you know, we do this, we did this for years, you know, and I just drop by and, and we talk, uh, you know, something about a case that was worrying me um, decisions to be made, we just talk about life, books, uh, meaning, existence, music, um, just so many things. It was just 
such a well-read, well-rounded, thoughtful human being. Um, that and I think you know, even now when I am at crossroads and, and you know, and, and professionally I have to make a decision or I have to think, um, you know, I go back to that um, and, and try to kind of you know because you feel. I think till your senior is there, um, you feel professionally and often sometimes personally as well, you know, um, that there is someone um, who you can discuss this and, 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 and get insights and wisdom from. Um, I think, you know, for me, both professionally and personally, uh, you know, from the age I was 19 to a year and a half ago, uh, those conversations with Ashok Desai are very much at the heart of uh, how I navigate professional dilemmas today. Um, and, um, and also, you know, uh, kind of like how I live my life personally, you know. Um, so I always go back to that. And I really miss, uh, you know, being able to get a drink with him or just call him and, and chat. And I always would call him saying, sir, it is me, your favorite junior. And we <laughs> always respond by saying, which one is that? Which <laughs> one is that? Um, and uh, I, I, I once said to him, you know, he has this, he had this garden and, and I, you know, and he had like birds in it, like, you know, not real birds, but, you know, sort of and kind of look at it and feel peace, I'm sure, when he was doing all these conferences. And I said, sir, why don't you just have a line of your junior's pictures? So every day when you have these conferences, even if we're not around, you can look at us. And he said, Minika, because the green is expected to bring me peace. peace. Not reflect on where I've gone wrong. Oh, my God. <laughs> nice. Wow, that, that's a wonderful share. And I'm, I'm sure there's a lot that he contributed to your life and to making you the professional and the person that you are, Menika. Uh, and thank you for sharing that as a memory. I'm sure conversations are, are the most precious intangibles that we're left with, right? So thanks for bringing that up. Uh, Dina, over to you. How about you? Any Anything or a memory that you want to speak of? Certainly, but just before I go into that, and you know, uh, Meneka has mentioned, you know, Ashok Bhai, and he was a wonderful, warm character. And all of us, you know, we, uh, uh, and I don't know whether you remember where he stayed in Bombay. It was a building called Ram Mahal at Church Gate. And in the earlier, he had a neighbor upstairs who used to keep a pet panther. Oh my, I did not know this. This oh, fellow wow. called Mr. Mr. Baroda Wala who kept a pet panther. Wow. And my old partners in my old firm, Mutle & Co, was decided to go for a conference to Ashok by and climb the stairs and was met by this panther on a leash <laughs> coming down. And he, of course, oh, needless to say, he fled and came back to the office and sort of said in, it, was, it sounds better in Gujarati, but he said, I had met a, 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 you know, a, a tiger or panther on the stairs. But then the others told him, don't talk nonsense, you're off your rocker. But that was, so there was a panther in Ashok Desai's, uh, in the building. Uh, anyway, sorry to digress. But yes, so like Menika, I mean, I don't have uh, a particular thing. But what I think I treasure most and, uh, you know, value deeply uh, are the little uh, notes. Uh, some of them are notes, some of them are letters, and some of them are conversations uh, that I have had with, uh, you know, people who have worked with me over these last uh, almost 40 years and you know for and for whatever reason I've decided to leave go you know move on do something else move to another city and you know that sort of uh, I've kept them I keep every scrap of paper uh, like this uh, and you know sometimes it manifests itself in these little animals which you see, you know, in my office picture behind me. 
uh, they know that you know I collect these and all that, so it comes you know along with that. But I really, you know, that really makes me feel, uh, you know, they're beautiful, wonderful notes and written from the heart, and it really makes me feel satisfied that you know I have been able to uh, mentor somebody, nurture somebody, leave them, you know, with a good feeling. Uh, about you know the place that they worked with, the colleagues that they worked with, uh, and you know just and that they are you know ready to move on in life, and that you know that that I have sort of you know it sounds a little cliche to say that I have sort of made a bit of a difference. Uh, so those I value, you know, there's no other object or such, but I value those. Again, intangible. Super, Dina. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you, ladies. This brings us to the end of this entire conversation. You both have been an absolute delight, and we're so grateful that you could bring your authentic selves and share as openly as you have. We're genuinely very thankful, and we've had a blast. Truly hope that you have too. We have. Yes, it's been absolutely. Thank you very much. Uh, a uh, great joy, great to do this with Menika. And Menika, we will definitely, you know, catch up. So. Yes, we must. Dina, thank you so much for being in this conversation because it really is, um, you know, a great privilege to a great fun. Uh, it's fun. You know, to have this conversation with you. And thank you to Ansute, Tanisha, Vikas. It's been just a great Sunday evening. Likewise, enjoy the rest of it and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Bye. Bye.